Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, the newest game set to release on November 16th on the Nintendo Switch. I, for one, am incredibly excited about these games and really looking forward to going to play through the Kanto region once again and play through these yellow remakes or reboots in a new way. Now, if you guys missed the Nintendo Treehouse, basically at E3, where they talked about all the games uh, for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and kind of played through Viridian Forest and then leading up to Brock and then kind of stopped there. I do have a link in the description where you can watch my reaction to it and the entire trailer on my channel. But in this video, I'm going to talk about five key things that were mentioned in that Treehouse Live uh, and actually mentioned before that you may have missed five amazing amazing facts about these games that has got me even more hyped than I was before for let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee now before I get into this video I do want to address that as someone who's been a longtime fan of this series I've been playing it since red and blue first came out I do it as my job I have a Pokemon themed office and I'm wearing a Pokemon shirt if that doesn't prove anything I don't know but uh, as somebody who's been playing this franchise for a really long time I'm really excited about this game, but I think you have to go into it with the proper expectations and realize, hey, you know what? This game is not going to be the game that us Pokemon fans who've been playing the DS games and the Game Boy games and so on are accustomed to. It's going to be different. And the reason for that is because they're trying to draw in that Pokemon Go centric audience into the Switch and into the main series games, ultimately to kind of uh, turn them into main series video game fans for the 2019 release. So look at it this as this uh, look at this is like a bonus game that's kind of how I'm envisioning it uh, let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee is a bonus game so for any of the features that may seem dumbed down or handholdish or whatever it may be just realize that they're trying to kind of grab any new and existing Pokemon fans and bring them all together so don't be too harsh of a critic is what I'm trying to say um, and I know it's easy to be very very you know this isn't the game I want and this is too baby and this is too much handholding and stuff and I get that but just try to realize that this is a game to bridge us to the 2019 generation 8 release but without further ado, let's jump into this video and let's talk about these five key things and these five amazing features that they're going to be adding into Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee that I think are going to hopefully carry over to the new game in 2019 and also just improve gameplay and game experience in general. Hit that like button down below if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're new as I post Pokemon videos every single day. So the first thing we've got here is Wild Starter Pokemon, which is super duper cool. If you're watching it, I have it circled many times here, but uh, Wild Bulbasaur kind of wandered into the grass and one of the cool things about this um, this this game is the fact that wild Pokemon just appear Pidgeys fly across the screen and if you bump into them then you'll get an encounter with them Weedles and Kakunas are moving around and stuff like that and you may have noticed that some of the Pokemon have a blue around them and a red around them and that is actually just indicating their size um, so if they have I believe it's blue then they're small if they're red then they are bigger I might be backwards but I think that's what it was um, so that's really cool so you can kind of get more experience based on the different size Pokemon you capture and run into but thought it was really really cool that you can find wild starter Pokemon in in the just the grass in Viridian Forest and it makes sense when you think about it because Pokemon Go you can run into the starters in the wild they're rare but they do show up and uh, I'm assuming things like Bulbasaur and we see later in the trailer Butterfree are just rarer Pokemon uh, but they do appear which is really really cool being able to catch a low level Butterfree or being able to catch the starters that maybe you missed before that's really exciting and um, I'm just I'm just pumped about that. I thought that was really cool that the starters are gonna pop up So that leads me to believe that maybe wild Pokemon that we're not accustomed to seeing in different areas of the game Are gonna show up there. We saw Oddish popping up in Viridian Forest Which is a Pokemon that previous wasn't wasn't capturable until Mount Moon normally if I'm not mistaken Which is after the first gym. So that's really cool I'm excited to see what Pokemon are integrated into the early routes as we've seen things like Mankey and We've seen things like uh, Nidorans uh, kind of heading towards the Pokemon League over there on the uh, the west side of the route basically going through uh, um, what is it? I can't remember the name of the town. Uh, the town where Giovanni's gym is. I can't remember it right now. Um, but Viridian City is probably what it is. Um, <laughs> Viridian Forest. Yeah, we got it. Anyway, so really cool to see the different Pokemon that are going to be appearing. But I thought it was neat to see that the starter Pokemon were found out in the wild. I'm curious to see whether Eevee is going to be findable in the wild as Pikachu seems to be accessible very, very early on in the game right here at the beginning I believe it was shown in Viridian Forest I wonder if Eevee is gonna be shown on one of the routes prior um, and early on in the game it would only make sense for it to be uh, as such the next thing here that I thought was really cool is we see that Pokemon are gonna have different move sets so uh, we don't know to what extent maybe it's just Pikachu maybe Pikachu and Eevee uh, maybe every Pokemon will get some kind of additional moves but uh, this is an interesting one Pikachu is gonna be learning double kick at level 9 which you can see it using double kick on against that Metapod and I'm just in love with these graphics man they look incredible 
incredible. I don't think I could have envisioned them. Like when I was thinking about this game, like before it was announced and what would come out on the Switch, uh, I would say that this meets my or exceeds my expectation. You know, we got so caught up in this Unreal Engine kind of vibe. And honestly, I really like this art style. I really love the style that this, uh, you know, this game graphically, it, it's beautiful in my opinion. But anyway, Pikachu learning double kick. Pretty interesting to see there. It learns it at level nine previously. It didn't have that move. And it's move pool, as you can see from Serebii.net, it's move pool and Ultra Sun and Moon. So I'm curious to see what other Pokemon are going to learn, what other moves and stuff. Maybe we're going to see some distribution of some really cool moves. Uh, but again, we are limited to just the original 151. But that does open the door for not only Pokemon to learn new moves uh, that they previously couldn't learn, but there could be new moves in general, like moves that haven't existed previously may exist now. I don't know. It seems unlikely, but it'll definitely be interesting to see whether they add new moves in general, um, like totally new moves, or it's just going to be kind of move sets are going to change but I thought it was pretty cool to see Pikachu learn a brand new move and if you guys didn't realize this whole treehouse was scripted like yes the girl was playing through the game and stuff like that but she knew what she was supposed to do and show throughout that 45 minute presentation so you can see at some time she kind of dawdles around sometimes she uses growls sometimes she does this and this and this and she knew exactly what she was supposed to do it's like scripted ahead of time so they showed us exactly what they wanted to show us I was hoping they would run into a shiny Pokemon at some point but that did not happen um, kind of going on a quick tangent here, people saying that shinies are not in this game. I don't think that's the case at all. Uh, Pokemon Go transfers into Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and shinies can be transferred, so the sprites are definitely in the game. So I'm assuming it's like you have to run into them in the overworld as you normally would. You encounter the Pokemon, and there's the chance for it to be shiny. I do want to see those shiny sparkles, though. I'm really excited to see those. So the next thing we got here is the fact that Pikachu and Eevee, presumably Eevee as well, but we know Pikachu for sure. It's hard to tell, but its tail will wag when you're near an item. So it's like an item finder, essentially, which I thought was super duper cool. So instead of having a dowsing machine or an item finder or some sort of device that kind of alerts that items are nearby there's a hidden antidote behind this tree and you can only tell because the Pikachu's tail starts wagging so I thought that was a really cute feature and a really like useful feature um, not you don't have to bust out some extra device or press some extra buttons or whatever you just have to pay attention to your Pikachu and kind of its movements as it's on you and you'll be able to find different items so I thought that was a really cool little integration there and I hope that they kind of figure out a way to integrate that into the games whether it's your partner Pokemon following you does something different or whatever it may be I think that's a really cool idea and it seems that they really put a lot of effort into coming up with little ways to make the game cuter and also more I don't know useful or accessible in that way um, the next one here I thought was really nice is and this is a big thing for me if you're watching my playthrough with Munch right now is the name Raider if you mess up a nickname or want to change a nickname you can actually do it right from your party so simplifying things quite a bit you can just change your Pokemon name right then and there, which I thought was really nice, actually. Uh, I'm someone who tries to nickname all my Pokemon, but if sometimes you make a typo, or sometimes, you know, you want to change the name when it evolves, like I had a Cyrunt, a Tyrunt that I named Cyrunt, and then I wanted to name it Cyrantrum, but it's a bit of a, an effort to have to go all the way to some name raider, some obscure place on the map that you want to get to and you forget where he is half the time whatever else really really convenient that you could just change the name right then and there i mean it, it makes sense right why why should i have to go to some special guy to change my nickname why can't i just do it for my summary screen and they make it happen right here which i thought was really really cool um the next thing and the last kind of point that i had here and this was a big one because this one like a lot of people on the internet were freaking out about this and the the main thing is you have your Pokemon box right with you so you can see open Pokemon box so you don't have to go to the Pokemon Center anymore to go to the PC and switch Pokemon out or whatever you can do it right from your bag so anywhere in the game you can do that and if you guys saw that you the trainer goes to the gym and the gym looks phenomenal you got the people in the seats and looks really really cool and he says you have to show me a grass or a water type Pokemon if you want to face the leader and I believe his his act, exact kind of wording was something they effective before that saying hey this is your first gym essentially we need to see some super effective types for the first gym I don't think this is gonna be for every gym I don't think if you're facing Sabrina you have to show him a ghost type I, I, I really don't think so I think it's just the first gym because for a lot of people this is the first time they're gonna be playing through a Pokemon game and that's what they're focusing on they're trying to to really focus on that younger audience and also keep fans like me me and you guys happy generally so I think that that's actually not a bad thing trust me it's it's annoying we know how to play the game I get it you and I know how to play the game generally we know that grass and water types are good against ground and rock I got it but keep in mind really simple you show the guy the grass and water type you go to your box you swap it out of your out of your party man it's not that big of a deal if you're nuzlocking so what you catch an extra Pokemon just for the beginning it's not like people who are watching nuzlocks could be like oh my god you cheated by catching that out no 
it's obviously part of game progression it's like the least big i feel like people get so angry about stuff and i agree i get it like i get it i understand why you'd be upset about this it's very handholdish but it's seriously the least biggest deal how are you gonna let this one line of them saying you have to show me a grass and water type pokemon to proceed ruin the fact that this gym looks incredible and the game looks phenomenal like I, it's just I, I don't know I, you know what i mean like i really feel like it's not that big of a deal when all is said and done so either way you show them the grass of the water type pokemon i'm assuming there's going to be more water type pokemon accessible early in the game outside of squirtle maybe polywags are roaming around maybe you can fish early on in the game with an old rod who knows but i'm assuming you could just you could just show them it you could walk past the guy you put it back in your pc if you don't want it to be a part of your team and you move on with your playthrough i really don't think that's an issue at all i don't think it's a big deal don't make it need to be anything bigger deal than that but either way i think it's really cool that you can access your pokemon box really easily you could just simply grab it from wherever you are which is cool the only thing i i hope they don't do is if you put a pokemon in the box and then take it out of the box will it be healed because that, that would be a bit that would, that would kind of be uh you know if you could just heal your pokemon on the fly without items because historically when you put a pokemon in the pc generally they get healed when you take them back out so we'll see about that uh that that's gonna be an interesting point there but these are just five kind of key things that i i really thought were awesome and amazing features added in a pokemon let's go pikachu and let's go eevee i don't know if you guys caught all these while you're watching it but uh they were the main takeaways that i had hope you guys enjoyed this video hit that like button down below if you did subscribe if you're new my name is dan i also go by a drive and i'm excited for pokemon let's go pikachu and eevee i hope you guys are as well peace Thanks so much for checking out my last video. If you like that one, you'll definitely like this one. And be sure to subscribe for more as I post Pokemon videos every single day.